guys! So it's time for another installment in my Planner Addict Dilemma series. This time, my thoughts have started to turn to the 2019 Hobonichi release, which is coming up in less than two months. And I have been wondering whether I should get a standard weeks, as I did this year, or a weeks mega. When the Weeks Mega came out last year, I debated whether or not to get one because obviously the thought of having extra note paper was really appealing, and in the end I decided not to because I felt like I wouldn't need so much extra paper. The difference between the Standard Weeks and the Weeks Mega is that the Standard Weeks has 68 pages of note paper in the second half of the book, and the Weeks Mega has 200 pages. So obviously, for a planner addict, the idea of a big chunky planner filled with note paper is like a dream come true and when I first found out about it I was really tempted to get one just on the principle that you can never have too much note paper but when I thought about it I came to the conclusion that really I don't use the note paper for so much that I need it like I need to have that much particularly because at the time I was using a separate daily planner so I was really only using my week's note paper for collections, basically lists of things like planner videos to make, or here's a list of my fountain pens, notebooks to find a use for, a packing list, that kind of stuff. And so I decided that going into 2018, I would just carry on using it that way. Another factor motivating the decision was that I really liked this cover and the Weeks Mega was only available in a few plain colors, so I decided to go for this. This year, I am undecided. I'm kind of going back and forth, and I just wanted to share my thoughts on it with you. So, I made a pros and cons list, <laughs> obviously, in the Weeks uh, note paper, and Here it is. So, the pros are, it's cute and fat. So who does not like a chunky notebook? I think it's irresistible. I've only seen one in real life once at PlanoCon Europe, where fortunately they weren't for sale. Hobonichi had a stall there, but they weren't licensed to sell in the EU. And that's lucky for me because otherwise I probably would have bought one. But it was really chunky and satisfying. and. I really, you know, like the thought of having just this like nice chunky planner because the, the Weeks is quite slimline, which is a good thing because that means it's light and portable, but there's just something irresistible about a nice chunky planner. So that's definitely one, one pro. Another one is that I would get to satisfy my curiosity about it. So because I've never had a Weeks Mega and it just came out last year, there's an irresistible urge in the planner addict heart to, you know, try the new thing that has come out. And it kind of feels like I'm missing out by never having tried one. Because one of the things about it is, you, like, until you know what it's like having extra note paper, maybe you don't realize what you're missing. I noticed this when I first started using a Hobonichi Cousin for my work planner. Before that, I was using a Moleskine Daily Diary for planning, and I had that in a Filofax Flex cover together with a Moleskine notebook, which I used for jotting down notes and uh, project plans and things like that. And I used the notebook quite sparingly, even though I could have replaced it if it got full, I just wasn't used to having lots and lots of note paper that I could use with abandon. And I didn't feel like I was missing anything, but when I switched over to a cousin which has the daily pages, and I started using the daily pages either for daily planning or for project notes and reference lists and things like that, I started writing way more than I had been doing previously, and now I feel like I couldn't go back to a system where I had limited note paper for my work planner. So that's an example of a, a case where if you'd asked me beforehand, I would have said, oh, well, it's fine, I'll just replace the notebook when it runs out. But somehow, having that paper there and knowing that it was just free for me to use was kind of liberating and I ended up using it a lot more than I had expected. So the same thing could happen. Uh, and following on from that, another pro is that I wouldn't have to worry about running out of room. So I think that instinctively I am quite careful about how to use these note pages. It's not like I consciously weigh up whether something is noteworthy or not, 
but I think because I know that there are only 68 of them and they have to last for the year, I've, I've kind of subconsciously worked out in my head how many I can use per month. So that's like, it's something like, I can't remember now, four or five pages a month. I'm sure that's wrong, but anyway, the point is that before I go to use a note pa page, I've kind of decided in my head whether or not that is worthy of it. Also because I keep these, somehow I feel like I want whatever I put in here to be nice and tidy and something that I would want to look back on. So there's a little bit of a, a sort of economical mindset, I guess, that goes into it. And I think if I had 200 pages, I just wouldn't worry about that. And anything that I wanted to write down, I could put in here and not care, which is one of the reasons that I that's one of the purposes that I want my weeks to be for is just a catch-all anything that's not work related I want it to be able to go in here and not have to think about it I would say that I use my weekly pages more in that way I don't worry so much about what goes in here or if it's perfect or if it's neat I just write down you know if there's a phone number that I need to write down I write it down if there's you know a, a random list or I want to write down cinema times I just write it down on this side of the page and I don't worry so I think that it would be quite nice having the weekly, having the, the notes pages be like that too, just knowing that there were so many that I wouldn't need to worry about running out or having to be careful about not using up too many of them. So another pro is that, as it is now, like I said, I just use these for more long-term collections or for specific things. So I dedicated a whole bunch of pages to notes for Eurovision, just for fun when we were watching Eurovision because I knew that I had enough pages and and so I just wrote notes on on every single uh, entry and what we you know, like what we thought about them and stuff like that so uh, I would be able to instead um, dedicate I calculated 50 pages to daily pages which I will talk about in a minute 50 pages for um, a vision book, which would be like a running list of things that I am hoping will happen and that I want to visualize as having happened, positive things. Uh, another one for meal planning, which, as you know, I have a very on-again, off-again relationship with meal planning, but it's something that I thought if I had dedicated space for it in my weeks, then maybe I would be able to do it more consistently. And then I would still have a lot of pages for the collections and the reference list and things like that. So I thought that having the extra daily extra pages would give me enough space for everything that I might need. And then I wouldn't ha need to worry about sometimes having to use a separate daily planner because I would know that there is enough room for it in here. And I really like the idea of just having everything in this one compact little book. So those are the, the pros. In terms of... Uh, the cons, they are, one, it would be bulkier and heavier, uh, and I'm not sure if this is a separate issue, but I decorate my weeks with stickers, only the transparent Happy Planner stickers, because those are the least bulky, and I love them, but even so, it definitely has got chunkier since I've been using, if you see that's what it looks like, you can see the bottom there where I put the most stickers, and the top is, is, see the bottom especially is chunkier than the middle. This is like what it started off as, and then this is what it looks like now. So it's not a dramatic difference, but it is definitely bulkier, and if I had an extra 130 notes pages in here, it would already be bulkier, so when I added stickers, it would get even bulkier. And the weeks is my on-the-go planner. Most of the time, I have my uh, Hobonichi Cousin work planner with me as well, but sometimes when I'm going somewhere that's not work related I just take this with me and I like the fact that it's quite light and portable. I have it in a cover which makes it a bit less portable, but it, nevertheless it's still a pretty small planner and that's one of its advantages, so I think that is a concern. I'm not sure it's a huge concern because apparently the week's mega edition is only 50 grams heavier, so it's really not a lot heavier, but that is something. Then another concern is that I might not use all the pages. So I think planner addicts will understand this fear because 
As much as there is nothing better than the idea of having unlimited note paper, there's also something distressing about finishing the year with a lot of blank pages. And I have done that pre previously. In my last two weeks, I've ended the year with some blank pages. And that was one of the things that made me decide to stick with the standard weeks this year rather than the weeks mega, is because I thought, well, I don't want to be in a situation where I end up with, you know, 50 or 100 blank pages at the end. That would feel like a crime, because once the year is over, I, I file these, I keep them. I don't want to go back and use the note pages later, and they would just be there forever mocking me. And I feel like 200 pages is really quite a lot. So it's not quite a page a day. If you were going to, let's say, use this as your only planner and you wanted to be able to make detailed daily lists, it, you wouldn't be able to use a page a day, but you could, it would, it's more than a page every other day, which I think would, you know, totally work for a lot of purposes, even if you were using this as your main planner. I actually once entertained the thought of using a week's mega, because I really wanted to try one, as my work planner instead of the cousin, because I thought, well, having all of these notes pages would mean that I could substitute the notes pages in my cousin, because I often only use half the page or a quarter of the page, and instead I could use this and it would be really compact. The reason that I didn't is because I'm just addicted to the hourly layout in the cousin for work because I have a lot of appointments and I like being able to see the days spread out in front of me as they are in the cousin. Uh, like this. And I wouldn't want to give that up and so I decided that that wouldn't be possible. But I think if definitely if I was using this the way that I'm using it now, which is as my personal planner, so basically just for to-dos and then, you know, other random things, uh, 200 pages would really, really be a lot. So I do often make daily lists, and as I have been using this planner, I've just made them here on the right side of the page. So sometimes I write down what I want to do at a specific day. So like, for example, let's say I'll write down something that needs to be done sometime during the week, but I don't know exactly which day I want to do it on. So sometimes I use it like that. But sometimes I, I will just make a long list of small trivial things that need to be done before the end of the day. Uh, so basically as it work, personal, just as a daily planner. And normally that works out okay, but quite often I do run out of room on this daily page, especially because I've also been using the bottom of the page as a vision list of things that I want to happen. So, like I said, that was why I was thinking that maybe if I had the week's mega and I could dedicate a section of the notes pages for vision and another section for daily planning, then that would free this up so that I could just use it for things like uh, running to-do lists during the week and random notes like cinema times and things like that and not have to worry about running out of room. But, as I said, the flip side is I've been managing pretty well using the daily list here and just using this for collections. I, I don't feel like I've been suffering, so it could be that if I had all of that space for daily pages that I just wouldn't use it because I don't need a daily planner every day or even every other day and it, I just hate the thought of all of that extra space going to waste. Part of that is because I like to be able to look over the completed pages and the completed planners, and in future years, because I keep these, I wouldn't like to think, you know, I would be looking over my used planner and see all the empty pages, because part of the fun is seeing how it fills up. So that's, that's another potential con. And then finally, and this is maybe a silly one, but still, I included it, my lineup of old planners would be uneven. Because let's say I got a week's mega for next year, and it's like, you know, thicker than this one. When I look on the shelf at my lineup of previous weeks, I'll have three standard size weeks, and then a week's mega which will be bigger, and then who knows, maybe the next year I decide I don't need it and I go back to the standard weeks, then it will look uneven. I think that that's a quite a trivial reason, so I'm pretty much happy to strike that off the list because it's still a week, so it's still the same shape, and so it wouldn't look really out of place in my lineup. And in any case, even if it did, that would be telling the story of my planner adventures, and it's not necessarily a bad thing, you know, they don't all have to look identical. So, 
those are the pros and cons and on balance I'm kind of thinking that I would like to make the jump and take the risk because on the pro side it could open up a whole new world of just having lots of pages to write stuff that had never even occurred to me that I might want to write because I'm used to the idea that I have to be careful and ration them a bit. Also it could be that I would realize that it's actually really really convenient having a separate space for vision and a separate space for daily planning and I think that my, the vision planning has been a little bit sporadic or very sporadic partly because it doesn't really have its own dedicated space so there have been some weeks when I've blocked off the lower half and thought I'm just going to put uh, the vision down here and put the to-dos up here but depending on how the week goes sometimes I end up wishing that I had more room for to-dos so I can't really predict it that well and so I'm thinking that if I had space at the back here that was dedicated for vision maybe that would make me do it more regularly because it does seem to have a positive effect. I think it's a, it's a good thing to do. It, it makes me feel less anxious when I've written down the things that I am worried about and, and basically put a positive spin on them and write down how I'm imagining that they have already happened, that they've gone well. Um, and the same with meal planning, maybe if I had a dedicated space, it wouldn't necessarily have to be in the notes pages, it could be here. So I could say, okay, I'm going to use the left-hand side for weekly to-dos, and I'm going to use the right-hand side for meal planning, and then just random notes, and I would also have space for random notes in the back. So there's a lot of potential, and I think the only way to find out how it works and what I'd use the potential for is to actually try it, because if I don't try one, then I'll always wonder, and if I do try it, then I'll know. And in the worst case, if it doesn't work out, I'll have a year where I have some blank pages in the end, and is that really the end of the world? But I think that if I have the pages, then I'll be more inclined to find ways to use them, which could be a good thing. So that's what I'm thinking at the moment. In terms of cover designs, I don't know what Hobonichi's planning yet for 2019, and I don't even know if they're going to bring back the week's mega again. I'm assuming that they will. If they don't, then I guess that dilemma will be solved for me and I'll just get a week standard, but I'm assuming that they will bring them back again. And I think in terms of covers, the fact that I've got this really cute, colorful uh, fabric cover means that I'm not so concerned about what the cover of the weeks looks like because this is enough to make it look pretty. So even if it's a plain fabric cover like the ones that they had for the week's mega this year, that will be fine. It could be that they'll bring out more different cover designs. I'm not sure how well the week's mega did this year, so that will be interesting to see when they introduce their new lineup at the end of August, which I'm really looking forward to. But I'm not worried about the cover issue anymore because I've got this. And the bulk issue, I kind of feel like it's not a deal breaker. I think it's not going to make it so chunky that I won't want to use it. It could be I'll get it and I'll try it and I'll think actually this is too chunky and I'm going back to the standard weeks next year and I don't need all those pages and that was a failed experiment but I think that it won't be too much of a risky thing to try for a year although I'm still not totally decided because again if this works and I don't really feel the obvious need all the time for more pages then maybe I should just stick with what I have. So. Those are my thoughts at the moment. Obviously, I won't be able to decide anything uh, concretely until the new lineup comes up, but that is where things stand now. So I'd be interested to hear if any of you have been using the Weeks Mega and how you find it and whether you're using it in conjunction with other planners and feel like it's great having the extra note pages or whether it's not really necessary. So. I hope that you uh, found these uh, Planner Addict musings enjoyable. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you again soon. Bye!